Okay. One of the most annoying parts to math is the fact that we have to follow the most basic structure which is the order of operations and there is a lot of confusion that surrounds following that basic order of operations structure order of operations follows the rule PEMDAS well PEMDAS if we all remember please excuse me dear aunt and when I grew up it was um, dear aunt Sarah However, I have learned through teaching that the S has morphed into many, many different names. So I now like to say, please excuse me, dear aunt something. And basically fill in the blank with whatever S word you want to use. Being that that's beside the point, it gives you the order of which that you're supposed to fill things out. Now notice, I've written my PEMDAS a little differently than normal. Please or the P part stands for parentheses. It comes first, which means you have to do anything in the parentheses first. You need to simplify that part all the way down until there is nothing left inside the parentheses to do. The second part is exponents. After you're done simplifying your parentheses down, you then have to look for your exponents. Now, here's where, th where things get a little bit funny. Um, when we are talking about the multiplication or division, the way order of operations works is that you will then either multiply or divide whichever comes first from left to right. So it's kind of like multiply divide is a partner. So when you're looking at your order of operations, you're going to always start on the left hand side of your expression and as you move through it, you will do whatever comes first, whether it's multiply or divide. The same goes for addition subtraction. Again, you will add or subtract from left to right, whichever comes first. Okay. So, some of the biggest hints that I can give you when working with fractions is that before you even get started, you want to make sure that you change all mixed numbers or potentially whole numbers to fraction notation. Second, you need to make sure that you remember when you find a common denominator, or when you are adding or subtracting, you have to have a common denominator. And third, when you're using exponents, you need to make sure that you are multiplying um, the number times itself however many times your exponent says. So for example if I have 2 cubed what you need to remember is that's going to be 2 times 2 times 2 and it applies to both the top and the bottom if you have fractions. So I thought the easiest thing to do was to just look at um, a few different examples of different um, order of operation combinations and go from there. So first I have 4 sevenths times 7 fifteenths plus 2 thirds divided by 8. Well, I have to always move left to right. So I'm always going to be starting and looking in that direction. So we're going to start on the left. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look through and I'm going to ask myself, do I have any parentheses? Well, the answer is no. Do I have any exponents? No. Then I have to look at multiply divide. So I'm going to start left to right and I'm going to look for, do I have multiply? Well, I do. So I have to start with these first two fractions and ignore the rest. So I'm going to start and... Um, with these two fractions here. And so I have 4 over 7 times 7 over 15. 
Well, the one thing that I would want to notice is that I can do a cross multiply simplification here. 7 and 7 go into each other and leave a 1 behind. So this is really going to become 4 over 15. Now what I need to do is I need to write in the rest of my problem. So I already took care of these first two fractions, so I have to write in the rest. So I have a plus 2 over 3 divided by, and I'm going to make it 8 over 1, just to make my life a little easier. Now, again, I have to start over. And I'm again going to look left to right. So again, we're starting left to right, and I'm going to ask myself, do I have any more multiply or divide? So left to right, and what I notice is I have a division. So I have to focus in on just these two. So in order to divide, it says you're going to keep the first, so two-thirds, change to multiplication, flip the reciprocal, 1 over 8. Again, I have a cross multiply here that I can reduce down. 2 and 8 go into each other, leaves a 1 behind, leaves a 4 behind. So this is really going to give me 1 over 3 times 1 over 4. Well, I know 1 over 3 times 1 over 4 is going to be 1 over 12. So therefore, I need to rewrite. So I need to start with my 4 over 15, and I have to add that to 1 over 12. Well, in order to do that, I have to have common denominators. So when I look at 15, this reduces to 3 and 5. When I look at 12, this can reduce to 3 and 4, and 4 reduces to 2 and 2. So I have to identify my greatest. So I have my 3, my 5, and my 2 and 2. Therefore, my least common multiple is going to be 3 to the first times 5 to the first times 2 squared, which is going to give me 60. So when I look at 15, I have to look at how do I go from 15 to 60. Well, I multiply by 4. So this is 4 times 4 over 60. And then when I have 12 to go to 60, I multiply by 5. So this is 1 times 5 over 60. The whole thing is over 60. And I have 16 plus 5, which gives you 21 over 60. I need to look for this to reduce. And I know right away I can divide both top and bottom by 3. So in doing so, this becomes 7 over 20. And thus, my answer. Let's go ahead and look at another one. So again, I have to start with um, my please excuse me, dear Aunt Sarah. So do I have any parentheses? And I do. It's this right here. So this means I have to do 8 over 9 minus 2 over 3. Well, what's common between 9 and 3 is 9. So that means this is going to become 8 over 9 minus 2 times 3 over 9. So this is 8 minus 6 all over 9. 8 minus 6 leaves me with 2 over 9. So I need to rewrite my problem, which was 3 fourths divided by one half times, and then I says my new simplified, two over nine. 
Now I have to again start on the left hand side and I'm looking for parentheses. Nope. And no exponents. So now I have to look at multiply divide. Remember I start left to right and whichever comes first. Well what comes first here is three quarters divided by one half. So this is going to be my three quarters change to multiplication and flip the reciprocal 2 over 1. Again I've got a cool cross multiplication thing here so I can change 2 to 1 and 4 becomes a 2 which says that this is 3 over 2 times 1 which leaves me with 3 halves. Again, I have to rewrite, so what I have is I have my three halves, and I'm multiplying that by my two ninths. Now there is nothing else for me to do except for to do this math, and again, if we look, I have a cross multiplication here. Two and two go away and leave me with ones. So this becomes 3 over 1 times 1 over 9. And just like before, I can cross simplify the other way. 3 and 9 are in common. This becomes a 1. This becomes a 3. Which is going to leave me with 1 over 3 as my result. Look at another one. Again, I have to ask myself do I have parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, starting left to right? And in this case, I have an exponent. I also have a parentheses, but there's nothing to do inside it except for apply the exponent, so I have to start here. And when I apply it, I'm applying it to top and bottom. So this is going to be the same as 3 squared over 4 squared, which is going to become 9 over 16. So I have to rewrite my problem. So this is 9 over 16 plus 3 and 1 half divided by 1 and 1 fourth. So before I do anything else, I need to convert this one and I need to convert these ones into improper fractions. So to convert them, again, says you're going to do bottom times the big number plus the top, keep the bottom the same. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 gives me 7 halves. And then same with the other side. The bottom is still a 4, and this becomes 4 times 1 plus 1. So this is going to become 5 over 4. So I have to rewrite my problem, and my problem says I have 9 over 16 plus 7 over 2 divided by 5 over 4. So with everything, I need to look at multiply, divide, addition, subtract, and I need to do everything in order. So the next thing that I have is my division here. So I need to combine these two. I'm going to keep the first, change to multiplication, and flip the reciprocal. Now with that, I also can do my little cross multiply. 2 and 4 have something in common. 2 goes away, 4 becomes a 2. And this right here is going to reduce down to being 7 times 2 all over 5, which is going to give you 14 over 5. Again, I need to rewrite my fraction, so this becomes 9 over 16 plus 14 over 5. And so in doing so, again, I have to find a least common multiple. So I know my 16 breaks into 4 and 4, 
and then each of those break into two and two. So my LCM here is going to be two to the fourth times five to the first. And so when I'm looking at that, I'm doing two to the fourth times five, which gives me 80. So here, I have to look at how do I change 16 into 80? Well, that's multiply by five. So this is nine times five all over 80 plus, and then five into 80 is multiply by 16. So this is 14 times 16 all over 80. So this is going to give me a big 80 on the bottom. Nine times five is gonna be 45. 14 times 16 is gonna be 224. So that means this whole problem is going to be 269 over 80. Now in some instances, you're asked to leave it as your improper, and which in this case, we would check to see if um, the value would reduce at all. Otherwise, the other thing that you would be asked to do is you would be asked to change this over into its mixed number form. And so remember, in order to do that, it says we have to do long division. So we put the 269 inside, 80 on the outside. We look at how many times does 80 go into 269. Well, in this case, it's 3. We're going to subtract away the 240, which leaves you with 29. 80 does not go into 29. Therefore, your answer is going to be 3 and 29 over 80. And that is your end result. Alright, one final one to try and help you. Notice this one, I have parentheses. So, you basically have to start left to right. So we have to start with this side, and we are working inside the parentheses. So we are working with 3 fifths minus 1 half. Well, when we're looking at 3 and 5, what would be common there, my least common multiple would be 10. So I have to look at how do I turn 5 into 10 multiplied by 2. So this becomes 3 times 2 over 10, and I'm subtracting 1 times 5 over 10. I'm going to have 10 as my denominator. 3 times 2 is 6 minus 5. So this is actually going to give me 1 over 10. So when I work at rewriting my equation, I'm now going to have parentheses 1 over 10 squared divided by 3 over 4 minus 3 over 10. So again, we have to work left to right and we're looking for parentheses and we have it, we have it on this side. And so we have to work with that. So we're going to do 3 over 4 minus my 3 over 10. What's common between 4 and 10? Well, 4 becomes 2 and 2, 10 becomes 2 and 5. So my least common multiple is found by taking my 2 squared and my 5. So 2 squared times 5 to the first. And this is going to give me 20. So how do I turn 4 into 20? Well, I multiply by 5. So this is 3 times 5 over 20. Still subtracting. 
10 into 20 means multiply by 2. So 3 times 2 over 20. The whole thing is over 20. 3 times 5 is 15 minus 6. So when we do that, we end up getting 9 over 20. So again, I can rewrite my problem. I have 1 over 10th squared divided by 9 over 20. The next thing I have to look at is do I have any more parentheses? Well, technically that answer is no, and the reason for that is because it's actually an exponent. So again, I have to square the top and square the bottom. So this is going to give me 1 over 100. So I can rewrite my problem again. This is 1 over 100 divided by 9 over 20. To do it says keep the first 1 over 100, change the operation and flip the reciprocal 20 over 9. I again can do some reduction here with 120. And so when I do that, 20 goes away, leaves a 5 behind. So this is going to be 1 over 5 times 1 over 9. You're going to multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom, and this is going to give you 1 over 45 as a result. So that is a brief example of how order of operations works when you use fractions. If you have any questions, please make sure you let me know. Otherwise, remember, have lots of fun with your math, do enjoy what you are doing, and I'll see you next time.